hey guys june is mental health month for men and mental health matters so does men's mental health and i wanted to do an upload um i didn't really feel like doing a live tonight so please forgive me um but i did promise this and i wanted to do it and um while I'm doing this, I wanted to play this video, and there may be a little tr trigger here and there, so just have a trigger warning, if you will, and um, let's listen to this video. It's called Men's Mental Health Short Film. It's called Man Up by Kat Amri. Fair use. The shrink's always right on, dude. So it's the childhood that fucks you up. Yeah, I, I used to be a sensitive child. My mom still wonders what happened to her little boy. My daddy happened, mom. Credit goes there. And I appreciate that you tried to meet my emotional needs. Fair use, but fair use. Out because he would beat them right out of me anyways. As the second youngest child in a big family, you tend to remain a bit unseen. Unless it's time to get your ass whooped. My father wasn't particularly a sophisticated man, but he had an affinity for inventing the most twisted ways to hurt me. His favorite trick involved sitting at the dinner table. He always waited until I had a fork in my mouth and then he strike. But that's it. A bit of a beating, a few cans of beer each night, no drugs or heavy abuse. I had both my parents. Well, at least they were there physically. There was food on the table and a roof over my head. But I can't seem to shake the feeling that the wound I've carried around with me wasn't really caused by the negative experiences I had to endure during my childhood. The wound is there because the good things that could have happened never did. Suddenly, I was looking at the world through a frosty glass. Every morning, my body leaves the bed, but my soul stays in it. I sleep, but I never feel rested. I take a shower, but I, I never feel clean. I eat, but I'm never satisfied. I work, but I'm never fulfilled. I make love. But I never feel it. You've got two arms, two legs, and a head that's sitting firmly on your shoulders. What the fuck is wrong with you? I angrily ask myself before everyone else inevitably will. Their voices tinted with multiple shades of disappointment. The cacophony whispers of those who have it worse haunts me every day. The terminally ill. The armless and the legless, the old and the crippled, the orphans and the ones who lost everything in a fire, the hungry and the poor, the blind and the homeless. Compared to this, my life feels relatively normal. I don't deserve the passport that would make me a legitimate citizen of the land of misfortune. Everyone has bad days. I hear while my friend pats me on my back. It takes all I've got to not tell him that my bad days have lasted for the past seven years. You know, so, so I told him 
I was okay, but I wasn't. And as weeks stretch into months, and then into years, I convinced myself that I was in fact okay. Think happy thoughts. Another comment I hear daily, like telling someone deaf to listen harder. I continue to function and work, but the plastic wrap that encases all this garbage inside me was so thin that I knew it was about to split open. Do you know why men don't talk about their mental health? I'll tell you why. It's because no one ever listens. I mean, not really. I this issue it under the entails rug. conversations that are so heavily politicized and uncomfortable that people don't want to face them. People just roll their eyes whenever a man wants to vent about his struggles. True story. And many of these attempts are very often shut down and seen as an annoying distraction from the topics that are truly worth discussing. I don't think people actually realise they're doing it. And fair enough, to say that women have had it tough for hundreds of years would be an understatement. But reframing men's suffering into how women have it worse seems to be a knee-jerk reaction these days. All this leads to is socially coerced silence which leads to loneliness. Men are placed in an impossible double standard. Open up or you'll be shamed. But if you open up, you'll be shamed. A man isn't expected to talk about his problems. He's expected to overcome them. And so we make fun of our misery in an attempt of not looking weak. It's not that I can't confide in people or that I can't show vulnerability. It's that the meager benefit of talking about this is vastly outweighed by the enormous problem of people using it against me. I choose not to talk about my emotions purely out of self-preservation. You can only hit a dog so many times before it wants to stop being touched. There you go. And I know that there are people out there who appreciate men's vulnerability, but so many of them try to fix our wounds with cliche soap band-aids instead of just sitting there and listening. I feel so fucking invisible, man. These may be trigger warnings. Give me 
people's space to heal instead of trying to do the healing for them. His words were very often cut like a knife, but I blamed it all on depression and I just kept soldiering through. Still, every spiteful sentence coming out of his mouth would add a grain of sand to an already heavy bag that I had been carrying. I appreciate he must have had his reasons to act the way he did, but fuck! The things he said were so fucking awful. But of course, I still feel guilty for not being there whenever he needed me. I know it can be difficult to open up, but I wish he would have just chosen to be embarrassed for a few minutes instead of doing what he did. voice inside my head stop saying I don't want to live and then moved on to you. I want to die it's not easy dying a lot of time has to pass before death itself materializes that thought is like a snowball in the very beginning you can pick it up play with it and then choose to throw it at a tree and watch it disappear. But if you let it roll down the hill and let it gain momentum, it becomes too large and too fast to be stopped. So you scream and wave your arms like a lunatic at a person standing at the bottom of the mountain. Please stop it. Please save me. But all you hear in return is people who actually want to kill themselves don't talk about it and just do it. Yeah. That's not always true. Fair enough. This is whose tape we're watching. Full credit goes to her. Please go subscribe to her. She has a bunch of videos on mental health.
It's true. It's very true. And it should never happen. It should never be swept under the rug. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You know, you need to make every day count. You need to Keep going and don't stop trying. June is Men's Mental Health Month and June is National PTSD Awareness Month. That's Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. PTSD is common. It's a mental health condition caused by traumatic events that can impact physical and mental health. All people can have that, men, women, the young. June is labeled for the month awareness for men, but anybody can have mental health and that's what we've been talking about the last few days. But men are important too. They matter too. And they, mm, most of the time, most all of the time, men get looked over and are never acknowledged because in the public's eyes, men are just supposed to, what, not cry, keep going. Men are not supposed to have issues Men don't cry and all the bullshit things that, you know, that society has made it. <laughs> and that in itself is bullshit. That's what the bullshit is. You know, it's important that we start having conversations about men's mental health too. In fact, it's important we start talking about all mental health and stop sweeping it under the rug. That's real. That's a fact. This also means, at least in my eyes, it also means teaching our children of all genders about emotional needs, awareness, and communication at an early age. So they're able to find a healthy, coping, um, I don't call it developing skill to manage their emotions and how to deal with these things in real life and real situations and with real people because they will no doubt people come across mental health and people that have mental health at any given time in their life. No matter if it's at home, aunts, uncles, grandparents, neighbors, the store clerk where they buy groceries, at school, church, School, they will come across people somewhere, sometime, I don't know, some someone in their life, if not them, with mental health problems. And it's a crisis here in America. Perhaps, maybe even, like I said, their self will have it. Some form of it. 
It's nothing to be ashamed of or embarrassed for. Nothing. Speaking of stores, I'd like to give a shout out to a store, a store chain actually, because no matter if you shop there or you don't, or you've heard of them or you haven't, it doesn't matter. Publix is a chain, a store, a grocery store. And let me shout them out here because they hire people of all ages, but they hire young kids especially. And they hire young and older adults with disabilities. And they are proud and they are organized. And they treat their employees good. And they're, they, there's a lot of people that don't know this, but they pay good too. They pay good too. They have great benefits. And most of all, they do not discriminate. That's who you want to be proud of to do business with or people who want to start, uh, you want to start shouting out those who mean something and have integrity and stand for something, who genuinely care about life. I know that's who I want to be affiliated with. But men are less likely than women to seek help for depression, substance abuse, stressful life events due to social um, outings, downplaying symptoms because they're, they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. Because they're a man. They feel shame or embarrassment that causes them not to get help. And that's really sad. Because they struggle in silence. And I said, struggle. Men are often raised from a young age like that. They're raised to be tough and unemotional, which it can make it very difficult for them to seek help. Men te tend to fall into dangerous, destructive, self-destructive behaviors rather than seek professional help for mental illness because they avoid any type of help or they delay seeking treatment because of the concerns of how they will be treated and that they will be treated differently. It should not be like that. Never, never. It's not a sign of weakness, not in my eyes anyway. Not in any real person's eyes that love you or any human being in life, period. If they love you, they're not going to sweep it under the rug. They would help you or lift you up and make sure you know it's definitely not a sign of weakness. I wish more men would express their emotions and embrace them. Some of the biggest men um, in the world are just big teddy bears anyways. But some of the biggest things men suffer from are depression. And that really affects their mood their everyday functioning in life. They suffer from anxiety and anxiety disorders. That's uncontrollable feelings of fear and worry. They suffer from schizophrenia, PTSD, substance abuse. Now, 
substance abuse is a huge, huge, and one of the most um, things that they use to self-medicate their selves to keep from, it starts out to self-medicate so they can either, if they're getting help, to come off their medications, their self, or they don't want to take the medications the doctor would give them, or they don't want to see the doctor, or they don't want to go get help to begin with. So anyway, they start self-medicating. That's a whole different ball game in itself, guys. Men try to self, and women too, but men try to self-medicate to keep from going to get help because of the stigma. And they're trying to fix and drown out their trauma and their pain and their suffering. And that's not dealing with it. In fact, that's bringing on an entire set of new problems, even unbeknownst to that person. And that's sad. Don't let stigma create self-doubt and shame. Stigma doesn't just come from others. Don't isolate yourself. Don't equate yourself with your illness. Get help. Join a support group. Speak out against what's going on with yourself. Look the truth in the eyes. Your mental health matters regardless of if you're a male or a female. And you matter regardless of if you are a male or a female. It don't matter if you're young or old. Your health and you matter. But men seem to get labeled more. If they are found to have mental illness, and guys, that's got to stop. It must stop. Younger men tend to face more stigma about depression and suicide. Again, I'll tell you like I did the other day. Mental, mental illness has a number of potential causes. Your risk factor can be higher based on genetics, family history, past trauma, and other things you cannot control. Did you hear me? You cannot control it. Can't control meaning a car wreck, a fall, hitting your head, something like a stroke, or a very traumatic experience. It can happen to anyone. And it could be, very well be you, Mr. and Mrs. Perfect. Whoever you are, mental illness does not really care if you're a male or a female. It does not care if you're already disabled. It does not care if you're rich, if you're poor. It does not care if you have a wonderful career or if you are homeless, or if you live paycheck to paycheck. It can touch you. And it can touch those you love in the blink of an eye, and you will never see it coming. It could be you, and that is the reality. People discriminate against those suffering from mental illness, and that's a form of rejection and outcasting. It could involve shaming, whether it's on social media or in real life. People shame, they bully, they harass. Again, we talked about that. We watched a video where a mother lost her 12-year-old child by unaliving herself, and she was perfectly 
healthy. Due to the pressure of internet bullying and harassment, we heard CPS on there, we heard a doctor, and we heard them say bullying is the same as DV. But also, government and corporate policies that restrict people with mental health issues from succeeding, that needs to change because government and corporate policies do restrict people with mental health issues from succeeding, either intentionally or unintentionally. They're to blame too. Mental health and reduced funding for mental health treatment, that's not good. Don't even get me started on that. Please don't get me started on that. Stigma can lead to discrimination, prejudice, and stereotypes harmful to you and anyone else with a real mental health condition. Remember, that's a large portion of this population. Just FYI, it's harmful. Some believe it's simply easier to ignore, reject, or reduce their mental condition and not take it seriously. And they hope it simply will go away if nobody mentions it. And that is just not true. It's not going away and it will not go away. If you don't take your mental health or the mental health of a loved one seriously, bad things can happen. People who brush off their mental needs can find themselves spiraling further into mental and physical illnesses. They may lose their relationships. They see their self-esteem go down, down the drain completely. They struggle at work. They become isolated from family and friends. They get so depressed, their thoughts spiral way out of control. They could do self-harm or harm others. We spoke about this also. They could even get on the criminal end, whether they're meaning to or not. Set gender aside for a moment and look at the physical symptoms of, mis of uh, mental illness. Untreated depression, for example, can lead to feeling sick and tired, guilt, even pain, make you feel worthless. Your attention span and concentration is not there. It can lead to insomnia. You don't have the same activities as you used to. Social isolation, you don't want to be out and about or around your friends. Hell, you may not even have any friends anymore. Changes in your appetite, weight loss, weight gain, back and forth. If left untreated, depression can really spiral way out of control. Sleeping a lot, bringing on thoughts and considerations of even attempts of taking your life. If they can't see it theirself, then a loved one should be able to see it and at least not ignore it and at least talk to that person. Ask that person are you okay? If they're on medications, are they taking their medications? Has there been any changes? Do you need help with anything to make your life easier? Just a simple ride somewhere maybe. Do you need help with something temporarily to lighten your load? 
you don't have to let them know you know if you're not that close. Just be an ear to let them vent. You listen. But don't ignore them or make it worse or hinder the situation by hurting them or those they love. Suicidal risk is not something to take lightly. It can be hard to predict when or even detect any of that in a certain person. The best strategy for that is never let mental illness get bad enough to even let that thought arise in the first place. Suicide is never a solution, never. But it will be final. And it is terrible, it's a terrible, symptom of me mental illness if it goes denied and ignored. You need to remember that. Make no bones about that at all. They should never come to that. It does not make you weak. It makes you stronger. You want to get better, right? So please ask for help if you're struggling with your mental health. That goes for anybody. But if you're a man, don't be ashamed. Take it seriously. If you don't take it seriously, how can you expect anyone else to take it seriously? Again, men are most the most likely to self-medicate. That brings on a whole new set of problems. Men often self-treat through addictive behaviors, and it's not just substance abuse. They do it through um, illicit drugs and women and a, all kinds of risky behaviors, gambling, all kinds of things. All kinds of things. It doubles the trouble, per se, when they're not willing you know, to see their problem and they self-medicate and then it's harder to manage. It can also, again, affect your whole entire everything, your work, your friends, your family. Don't allow it. Take control. Use the resources and the tools. You as people, if you truly want to help and not hurt, try to help create a world where boys and men are given to, are given permission to fully be human. Okay, did you hear me? You as people, if you truly want to help and not hurt, try to create a world where boys and men are given permission to fully be human. Let them be vulnerable and express their emotions. They have emotions just like us. Stop trying to make them feel like men shouldn't cry or have feelings. Actually, stop trying to tell anyone how they feel. Now, I'm a big believer in you don't tell anybody how to feel or who to love. That should never be in anybody's thoughts. 
That's a big no-no in my book. You cannot control that. You can't control everything. And those are two things you cannot control. That's out of your control. Again, hell, the other day, for fuck's sake, I had somebody ask me why I was smiling for fuck's sake. Uh, because I'm not a miserable human being like these other assholes you're used to. And I choose to be happy and I choose to enjoy life. And I can smile if I want to. So get off my community post and go choose to be miserable somewhere else because it's not here. Don't tell people how to feel. That's the problem with a lot of people today. It's okay to have opinions and thoughts, good or bad, but when you start trying to rule how somebody feels, their emotions, Gosh, you're worse off than they ever thought to be. But again, June is designated for men's mental health. Use this month as a crutch to go in and just get yours checked out. Make sure... You know, if you need some fine tuning, hey, it never hurts. Just say you did it because it is Men's Mental Health Month. It's nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about. But there is, then don't worry about how people feel. Don't worry about how people feel about what you do or what you say. Don't worry about what people think. Don't do that. But listen, there's this hotline. It's called a warm line. I found it. And whether you're in a crisis or you just need someone to talk to, a warm line can help. Warm lines are staffed and trained people who have been through their own mental health struggles and they know what it's like to need help. Warm lines are free and very confidential. The clear warm line can be reached at 1-800-945-1355. Let me give you that number again. The clear warm line is can be reached at 1-800-945-1355. And that output was updated March 18th, 2024. So if you're in need and you just want to talk, you're in a crisis or anything like that, call this place called the Warm Line. And the number to the clear warm line is one 800 Nine four five one three five five. Please call them if you need help. There are other helplines out there, but this is a new one that I come across, and many of you may not have that number. Please take this seriously, and men. Know that you're important. There's no shame in mental health whatsoever. There's no shame if you shed a tear. And there's no shame in speaking up and asking for help for yourself. Men do a lot. Men do a lot. It's time men are able to take care of their self. You are so important. I love you all. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Good night.